what is what what is Drew McIntyre doing out there? Does the company know what they're doing with Drew McIntyre out there? Does Drew know what he's doing out there? What am I talking about? I'll explain in this review. Also, we have to talk Liv Morgan invading Dominic's clubhouse. There was a girl in the Judgment Day clubhouse. And Finn Balor and Carlito, they all feel a different way about it. Carlito loves the idea, right? We had a girl in here? That's cool. Finn Balor is screaming, cooties! <laughs> but whether they like it or not, there was a girl in the clubhouse. We're going to talk all about it. It's the Hour 1 review from Monday Night Raw last night, 6 10 Later on the channel, there'll be two separate reviews uploaded. The Hour 2 review, which you're going to want to catch because... Um, we turned up the heat or Liv Morgan turned up the heat on Dominic Mysterio and it's what she did not to, but on top of Dominic, <laughs> we have to talk about that. I got a lot to say about that. So that's later today on the channel, our twos review and what Liv Morgan did on top of Dominic and everything else that happened in our two. And then in a separate upload, we'll have our three. I have a lot to say about that as well, because one of the superstars I put on the highest of pedestals took another massive L last night. So not only do I have a lot to say about that, but it's what happened after the match. And a superstar was maybe not just written off of TV, but maybe out of WWE permanently. So we're going to have to talk about that as well. So all that, stay locked in on the channel. Hour 2 and Hour 3's reviews will be uploaded later this afternoon. This is just Hour 1. Lot to get to, little bit of time to get to it, so let's, let's jump right in. Drew McIntyre starts this show with Damian Priest in a face-off. Now fans start chanting CM Punk from the jump because for most fans, CM Punk Drew McIntyre is more fun than Damian Priest Drew McIntyre. And CM Punk in this story and feud with Drew, CM Punk is the quote good guy while Drew is the bad guy. Yet, as these chants rain down of CM Punk, Drew McIntyre cuts a complete face promo on Damian Priest. And it goes further than just Drew is going to be cheered in Scotland. So he has to kind of lean more toward the face in the feud with Damien. It goes beyond that. On his way out of the ring, he is high-fiving fans from Ohio. <laughs> the same fans that were just chanting CM Punk in a feud that Drew is adding wood and fuel to that fire, by the way. Thankfully, while CM Punk is injured, Drew McIntyre is making that fun. But he's obviously the bad guy in it. And they were just chanting for Punk, and he's high-fiving them on the way out. If you're going to Scotland and you get the hero's welcome, that's fine. Right? It's a like Bret Hart. Bret Hart was the, the dastardly heel in America, but every time he went to Canada, this dude got the hero's welcome. You could, you could put the title of president or king on the dude, and it would make sense. But that's Scotland. You're in Ohio, and this is the problem when you book heel versus heel like Paul Levesque McMahon has done yet again is that the fans don't really know what to... So they just start chanting for a dude that's not even in the arena who's injured with, <laughs> with, his, with his coffee in one hand and Larry in his other arm on the couch with AJ Lee watching the show. That's who they're chanting for because they don't, they're not interested in this, right? Not as much as Scotland is going to be to see Drew McIntyre win a championship. It, is, it was so odd, the fans that are, were against Drew because th they're, they want CM Punk. They're chanting for Punk, the good guy. And then Drew is high-fiving the fans because he's supposed to play the role of good guy in Scotland. So he's going to play the good guy in Ohio and Boston and L.A. and Houston and Minneapolis and everywhere he goes uh, before Scotland and then afterwards he has to slip right back into the role of bad guy for the CM Punk feud I guess I, I it's it is it's one of those situations where in show business the old saying is when you confuse your audience they'll just walk away there's no consistency in Drew's booking 
Just two weeks ago, he was in a three-way promo, you guys remember, with Priest and Gunther. Three heels were having a promo on one another. <laughs> three heels! Drew, Damien, and Gunther. And the crowd, you go back to that crowd, they didn't know what to do, what to chant. They were confused. Even Paul Levesque McMahon had to have been backstage last night saying, uh, did I do a (laughs) boo-boo? It was just an awkward start to Monday Night Raw, which built no intrigue for their title match at The Clash. In fact, all that was accomplished by the end of that first segment for Monday Night Raw last night, all that was accomplished was another match between Mac and Balor for later in the night. And the stipulation is, if Balor wins... The Judgment Day will be at ringside. But they were going to be anyway. Just because Damien said he doesn't need them at rings, they were always going to be there or could show up. There was no rule against that. So, but if Drew wins, they would have been banned from the ringside because Damien said he doesn't need them anyway. So there, what? <laughs> so you waited three hours to see if Judgment Day will be at ringside. Thank goodness we waited that three hours. Moving on. That's all I'll say about it, man. Because I respect Drew so much. He's one of my favorite dudes in the industry right now because of what he is doing with the CM Punk story while CM Punk is not able to do anything. So Drew McIntyre, ever since he turned heel, or at least we thought he did, we've been seeing the best side, the best version of Drew McIntyre. But he just, he still, so many of the times, is a tweener, and he just falls back into the the face thing. Again, Scotland is one thing. High-fiving the fans that were just chanting CM Punk, it's weird. It doesn't fit the Drew McIntyre character now. We have to we have to get better in that aspect. Um, you guys came here for an actual, truthful, right? A, a, an honest review that's as honest as you're going to get. Uh, If you like what you're seeing, the good news is it can be, it should be even better then. So if you like what you're seeing, you don't see a problem with, guess what? You can get even better. And that's what we're trying to achieve. And if you don't like the fact that Drew is always this tweener, doesn't make sense and you know it can get better. Well, hopefully the company, um, hopefully the company makes those tweaks and changes. It has to happen. Drew should be so special right now. The only one holding him back is himself. And just awkward, confusing booking. Moving on. Backstage, Liv Morgan is alone with Dominic in the clubhouse. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. She's trying to put the moves on the dude. But the dude is like, no, I can't. My parents are going to be back any moment now. (laughs) It was... So hilarious. It's like one of those like cheesy rom-com 90s movies or something, you know? <laughs> those little teen flicks. And uh, the girl's trying to like put the moves on the dude, that you know, the kid that's like so shy and he doesn't know what to do and he's stumbling over his words and his own two feet. He's got two left feet. <laughs> Morgan is like backing him up in the clubhouse. He's like, Give. Dominic is like, come on, my parents are going to be home any minute, man. You got to leave. You got to go. So Morgan, Morgan says, uh, it, this is basically a quote from Liv Morgan. You deserve to have someone who's going to call you daddy because he's always calling Rhea Ripley mommy. So Liv is like, I'm willing to reverse it. I'm willing To call you, I mean, right there, I'm like, dude, how this dude is resisting that temptation is wild. Then she says, if you change your mind, I'll be in my hotel room, gives Dominic Mysterio her hotel key. Props to Dom Dom for resisting temptation, because BC would be like, humada, humada, mama who? Mama what? Mama check you. (laughs) What, I don't know, mama. (laughs) Mama? No, 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 no. Be, listen, give me an hour. I'm going to freshen up, do a couple two tree things. I'll be in that hotel room. Man, Liv Morgan. And it was it was hilarious afterwards. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll just go over it now. There was a matchup first. I'll cover that in a second. But to end our number one. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't. No, it wasn't. There was another match. Hold on. I'll get to that. Hold on. There was more hour one review. 
Let me just go over the backstage segment now. I'm a little out of place here because there was a match between EO and Valkyria, and then we went backstage to continue the Dominic Liv Morgan situation. So that's how that segment ended. Liv hands the hotel room key and takes off. Now, after EO and Val, which I'll get to in a second, backstage Dominic confesses that Morgan was in the clubhouse and that she gave him her hotel room key. So Dominic was truthful. Balor, Carlito, and McDonald's are all in shock that there was a girl in the clubhouse. They're looking at the hotel room key on the table and they're just like, they're just shook, right? A girl was in here. Carlito is the only one smiling. He looks up at Balor and everybody and he goes, that's cool. And Balor so organically, it was so, Balor has been playing his role beautifully as like the overbearing parent of Dominic and he won't let the girl get close to him. Balor looks at Carlito after he says, that's cool. And Balor's like, no, not cool. (laughs) Come on, bro. It was like I said, it was like one of those cheesy 90s teen flick movies. It, it, you know, we're all the the goofy boys are, are like, they don't know what to do with that one girl that is just way smarter than them and is already way more grown up than them. It was great, man. Just the whole concept of the girl was in the clubhouse. (laughs) The best, the best way to put it is legit LOL moment, like legit laughed out loud. Not many times on these shows will that happen. Certainly not with as much as I respect the dude, not with our truths comedy. (laughs) He's the closest thing. Once in a blue moon, our truth will, will, will catch me off guard. Now I'll literally just laugh at the absurdity that our truth is in. Uh, that dude is absolute gold. But man, this really was just one of those moments where I was like, everybody played their role beautifully. And an hour or two, you're not going to believe what Liv Morgan did to or on top of Dominic Mysterio. That upload is going to be up later on the channel. Hour two and hour three uploads later on. We'll go over that. Now, going back right before that segment, though, where Balor or, or Dominic comes clean that Liv was in the clubhouse, EO Sky defeated Valkyria via hold him down for root roll up. It's like that crucifix uh, hold him down roll. I call it a fruit roll up. It's, it's all of them are just holding somebody down, holding their arms down and they just can't get up. So Val is defeated by EO post-match chance and Carter help fend off uh, damage control. So they're going to try to make a, this uh, six man thing, a thing that'll get or six woman thing, a thing for the next month. You could do that. Obviously a bunch of one-on-ones between chance Carter and Val and all of damage control, some tag team matches. And of course, one or two actual six person matches. So this is easy booking for WWE. You just get, You get a a trio here, a trio there, and that is a whole month, if not more, of television. I can't say that's too much fun, but I respect every one of these ladies so highly. EO, Valkyria already, and you guys know how I feel about Chance and Carter. I feel they're a legit tag team. Like, if you are truly going to make a tag team division for the ladies, uh, that's a team. One of, I'm not saying they have to be the team, but that is a team you can build uh, around it's basically like a nucleus a foundation for the division so uh, and by the way I, I do have to say too the way they did it throughout the match that val almost won a couple two three times but because of dakota kai and kari she did not that did protect val a little bit but the hold them down pin i don't feel that protects anybody then, to end our number one, we had a great backstage segment with Sami Zayn and the Alpha Academy. This has been one of WWE's better storylines. Uh, even for BC, way better than the Bloodline storyline as we await uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, for the first time in a long time, Otis actually speaks an actual promo, explaining to Sami Zayn that he, he had lost everything he once had. That was special to him, his briefcase, his peach, Mandy Rose, Tucker, his old tag team partner. Just a bunch of things that made Otis so special uh, was pretty much uh, is what made Otis kind of what he is today with Chad Gable. In fact, he says Chad Gable was there for him. Without him, 
He's nothing, he says. Sami Zayn flips out. Not true. What? He, that's what he wants you to think. He's manipulating. You have to be stronger than that. It was a whole wake-up call speech by Sami Zayn. Same speech he's been trying to get through to all of Alpha Academy. So Zayn eventually walks away as Otis ponders his future uh, with the Academy in disarray, right? The, the look on Tazawa and Maxine's face. Uh, I mean, just like... <laughs> Uh, it, they're playing their roles just so beautifully. It, and, and when everybody does that, it's what makes the story special. It, it's what it, it connects because everybody is playing their role so flawlessly. So you can believe in the storyline. So that's why I say this was actually, even though it was just a backstage segment, it was a great segment and it really plants more seeds for Otis eventually and to Zawa and Maxine, but eventually giving Chad Gable Das boot. And by the way, Otis would take on Sami Zayn. That would be in the hour two uh, review, I believe, coming up on the channel. Hour two or three. Either way, both reviews will be uploaded um, not too long from now. So stay locked on the channel. That is hour one. That's how it ended. So hour two and hour three, there was a lot to talk about. I'll try to do it in minimal time. But make sure you catch those reviews. You're not going to believe what Liv Morgan did to Dominic Mysterio. And you ain't going to believe what happened to Dragunov and Ricochet. Until next time. And there will be that next time. Top guys, we're out. BC saying check you.